which is still a ton, a ton of money. Like, that's a lot. I wouldn't even know what to do with all of it. Hey guys, finally back in the harbor, right at my studio. I've missed that building, I've missed making music in there. I'm also missing my garbage, but... Um, probably some truckers that stole them over the weekend. The same truckers that, that pee everywhere, but anyway, so it feels good to be back here in the studio, being surrounded by gear, just boosts my creativity as much as I like being on the weekend, like like doing these conventions and stuff for DJs and music producers, right here is my favorite place. So in today's video, I actually wanted to clarify one thing and one thing only, because first of all, I'm working on the cover that I can share with you. Hopefully the last day, we're just waiting for 14 more percent to be able to actually release it. So the topic will be actually how much a DJ actually earns or how much you could actually charge as a DJ, like how much does like a beginner get and how much do the really, really big DJs actually get, which is like probably the more interesting because it seemed like a lot of people yesterday in the Q&A wanted to know just that. And because it were so many people, I thought, why not make an entire video about it? And this was mostly caused by me being at the MixCon, that convention, and the manager or one of the managers of Robin Schultz was there and he did the panel and he was talking about how much DJs actually get. Auf der DJ Seite gibt's noch extrem viel Entwicklungsspielraum. Wenn ich sehe, wie so ein Martin Garrix oder ein Chainsmokers oder Kaigo weltweit unterwegs sind, da ist Robin doch noch ein ganz Stück weit gagenmäßig. I know it's a German, but he basically said that Robin Schulz is making six figures, small six figure numbers. And for example, Martin Garrix, Chainsmokers, they make bigger six figure numbers. And we're talking here about per gig. So a gig might be just like half an hour, an hour, maybe two hours, but that's it. That's like a really, really high hourly wage. Like it's insane it's unbelievable normal people need an entire year to make not even close to that it's it's like crazy how much like the big top 100 djs actually get you see these right here these are my very first dj headphones so look how <laughs> destroyed they look because i'm already djing for 15 years so i went through maybe the first and second stage of djing and and how much money to get as a dj so usually when you start out, there is like a very steep learning curve. You have to learn a lot, collect a lot of songs, and this can take like a year until you're ready actually to play in front of people. And then your first gig will be 99% of the times without getting anything. Like I think my first five, six gigs, I got nothing. And then maybe the, the 12th gig, I got like 50 euros and then 100 euros and just went from there. Cause you have to prove that you can DJ to actually DJ in front of people. Cause a lot of people rely on you. Just for example, you play in a club, 500 people, you screw up entirely, 200 people leave because of that. Then that's a lot of lost money for, for the club owner. So that's why you first have to prove that you can actually DJ and, and work with a crowd and make sure that you deliver. So in this first stage, it's really all about spending your money on equipment and songs. It's all about spending time in front of your DJ decks and just learning, watching a lot of tutorials. And I'd say if you then are connecting smart within your city, like locally, you talk to other DJs, to promoters, club owners, bar owners, you might be able to, to get a residency that's like regularly playing at the same place. And a resident DJ can make between 200 and maybe 600, 700 euros per night. And yes, per night. At that level, you get paid for the night. So you DJ four, five, maybe even six hours. The more you go up, the shorter the amount of DJing actually gets. And the money is just like exploding. And then one level up, at least money-wise, would be then the wedding DJ. A lot of people don't like playing it weddings i absolutely hate it i never did it and i will never do it no matter what you offer me 
because it's just like you have to play everything, every kind of music. And there are so many kinds of music that I hate, that a lot of people love, especially here in Germany. You have to play Schlager and like Carnival's music and this kind of shit. So I'm not up for that. So I always said no, no matter who asked me. If it was a friend for their wedding or if they offered me a lot of money, I just never took it. I always recommended them a friend. I think as a wedding DJ, you make at least 500 euros. It could be up to 1,500. If you bring your own equipment with you, this also is like a factor. If it's like a huge venue and you have to rent big speakers, that's also a factor, but that's usually the range. Above that doesn't really work. And also as a local club DJ, you will actually never go above 1,500 per gig because then there's actually the next level. In that next level, people not only pay you to play music. I mean, playing music, everyone can learn that, but above 800, 1,000, 1,500 euros, people pay you for your brand. So let's say your name is DJ Pippi, and yes, there's actually a DJ called Pippi. There's also a DJ called Katze. That's like Womit in German, but it's another story. Let, let's say your name is DJ PP. And because your name is on, on the promotion, on the flyer, on, on the billboards, more people show up. Then you're worth more for, for the club owner. Let's say 100 people just show up because of you and pay 10 euro entrance. So that's a thousand plus because you show up for the club owner. So he has absolutely no problem paying you a thousand. Because on top of that, you're DJing. So basically, you're DJing for free and you get the money from the people that actually come because of you. This stage around, you will have a little bit of cost like for promotion, Facebook promotion, Instagram, having a website, getting in touch with people, maybe an assistant if you get like four to six gigs per month and you will be touring locally, maybe within your country, maybe uh, within like your city and the neighboring cities really depends where you live. You might play here and there on festivals. You might play on the radio sometimes if, if you get in touch with the people. But if you want to get to the next level, like the worldwide touring superstar DJ, there is actually only the one solution and that is actually to produce music. So producing music is what I basically do every day. It's a whole lot of fun, but I'd say it's a totally, totally different skill set to DJing. For DJing, you have to be like open-minded, getting in touch with people and studio stuff is more nerdy and not really liking going outside. So being both is actually really hard. That's also one of the reasons why a lot of DJs are getting ghost produced. So they have someone producing them. They tour and the other person in the studio making the music. You can think about that what you want, but that's the reality. That's usually how it happens. Because the one person DJing gets so much money, it would be a waste to put him in the studio. So they put other people in the studio that are even more specialized. And that's just how the business works. I think all of the David Guetta songs are produced by other people. Most of the Robin Schultz stuff, there's like a team involved. I mean, he's also involved in making them but there are more people helping. And then we got, for example, Alan Walker that has a ghost or a co-producer, whatever you want to call it. And probably a bunch more we don't know about. I think Tiesto also is getting ghost produced, never did the song himself. But yeah, again, for, for this higher world touring league, you, you need to have music because if your music gets played on the radio or on Spotify, that's a way to promote your brand as a DJ and make sure that even more people show up to your shows that it's actually worth to book you to another country, pay for the flight, pay for, for the hotel, and pay you a ton of money, basically. I'd say at this stage, you make at least like 3,000 euros, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to pay on top of that your traveling costs. So it's 3,000 to almost endless. I think there are some DJs that get for certain gigs a million per hour for like one hour DJing in Vegas, they get 1 million euros or dollars, which is totally insane if you think about it. I also know some of the big DJs, they play birthday parties for some really rich people in Dubai and get even more than that. But usually like a million per gig is like, like, like really the ceiling at the moment at least. Maybe in a couple of years, people will pay even more. And a lot of people complain that it's not fair. And a lot of young DJs also think it's not fair. I don't even want to start discussing that and get in that topic, but it's it's worth it. And we live in a world where like, 
if it's worth it, people will do it. So if you pay someone a million to DJ and a whole lot of people show up and pay 80 or 100 euros, just entrance fee, and then you have some rich people buying tables and bottles for 10 thousands of euros, then it actually makes sense to give the artist that much money for showing up and making sure that so many people show up. Plus on top, the super rich guys showing up, buying bottles and putting that onto their Instagram just to show off and not caring about how much things cost. Those are usually the best customers. And at this stage, um, don't underestimate if they get a million or half a million. I think Steve Aoki got almost half a million for playing at a festival nearby. I got that kind of confirmed by a friend that is working for them. From that half million, 20% at least goes to the management. Maybe um, it could be between 15 and 30% but usually 20 is the standard, which still leaves you with a whole lot of money, but then maybe the ghost producer needs to get paid. Some ghost producers actually get money from the gigs. This is also a way to compensate them. Then taxes, the traveling, sometimes the DJ has to pay, the light shows, sometimes the DJ has to pay because it's part of the performance. So if you hear those high numbers, it's actually maybe just half of it or even a little bit less, which is still a ton ton of money like that's a lot I wouldn't even know what to do with all of it probably just <laughs> buy more gear Who are we? Who are we? I'm all done with producing for today and still no real sign of my trash cans they're still gone. I don't know where they are. I called a couple of my neighbors to ask them if they know what happened. And Ben was here in the studio alone the entire weekend, so maybe he knows. But um, I, I might have to... <laughs> I mean, I looked it up online. It said if your trash is gone, your, your cans, you have to call the police and file a report and then the insurance, which is like a whole lot of trouble for, for these kind of shitty garbage things, which is annoying, but... You'll find out what happens tomorrow. For me, it's not time to sign out, say bye. Don't forget my next release, the one that you heard, that's background music of this video, will be out this Friday. Or it might be even already out. Then it's just linked down below. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.